I outlined the presentation in five uh, modules, right? These are the typical questions that my clients ask me to address, um, starting from how has marketing kind of changed? Um, there have actually been major sea changes um, since I got out of graduate school, which was 1983. And so, one of the first major sea change actually happened around late 1990s when this little company, these two little companies, one's called Yahoo, the other one was called Google, emerged and search was invented. That really revolutionized and, and took the discipline of marketing to yet a new level. And then most recently, I would say in the last three, four years, uh, social media is another major sea change, right? And so tonight we're going to take a look at the impact of those two uh, major sea change and see how it's impacted the lives of marketing and sales professionals. Of course, then we're going to get into some uh, discussions about what new skills are actually needed in order to be more effective, uh, particularly when it comes to engaging with your customers because nowadays more so than ever, customers, customer be engagement began online and often without your knowledge. 20 years ago, customers called up and ordered a brochure, right? And you mailed it out, and that's how you know customers are interested in you. So things have changed a lot. Next, we're going to talk about how to ensure effective sales and marketing alignment against a common set of business goals too often startups don't make it because uh, there's finger pointing, there's just marketing and sales do not work well together, right? And so we're going to kind of maybe talk about why that's the case and what can we do, what are some of the tools and techniques that have been invented that if used properly can help with the alignment of marketing and sales. We're also going to be kind of, I, in coming here, I assume some of you are startups and free is good. Uh, nowadays, I can really see a difference, uh, even with my own clients. Um, some of the newer clients, cloud-based, web 2.0-based companies, right off the bat, they start off with Google, uh, a Gmail as their uh, corporate email of choice, right? Whereas when you're with Fortune 500, I don't know about you, but always Microsoft Office tools. So there's just some fundamental differences in choices of tools that businesses will use to run their business. And I really do see that distinction. And that runs all the way through what kind of tools they use to do marketing and sales. So we'll touch on that. And the last point I want to close off with is um, kind of understanding where you are in the maturation curve. Right? The tools I use as a startup is going to be very different than if you're a for, Fortune 500 company. So we'll, we'll take a look at that as well. So let's ju just jump right into uh, what adaptations do I think uh, are required to ensure revenue success in the era of the informed buyers. So I want to start off and ask, have you guys heard this term, inform the buyers, and what does, what does the phrase mean to you? Care to take a guess? Okay, how, how do they get informed? Um, I think the answer I'm looking for is, nowadays, more so than ever, Customers educate themselves long before they call, make, long before they signal to your sales department that they're, they have intentions to buy, right? Prior to the advent of search and prior to the advent of social networks and social media tools like blogging, people depended on vendors to do the training. People actually call, the, call vendors and order brochures. And that's the beginning of kind of their research process. Nowadays, that process has been accelerated. People read a lot, they talk to friends, um, and so by the time they finally contact your company, the thing for you to realize is sometimes your prospects know more about the product that in the services you're trying to sell than you do, 
right? They might have already talked with your competitors, so you need to be aware of that. So let's go back and um, to put things in perspective, let's take a look at the major sea changes that have happened in the last 20, 30 years. So when I first got out of graduate school in the 80s, um, uh, Professor Phil Cutler was my professor at Kellogg, oftentimes in that world. Uh, Professor Cutler is Mr. Marketing, right? Kind of invented and wrote some textbooks that every MBA reads. And simplistically put, back in those days, you went to get your MBA, you learned about the four P's and the six C's, and by the time you graduate and you become the product manager, you need to know uh, how to market your product based on some basic principles. And simply put, Traditionally, B2B marketing is split down the path of product management, which tends to be product and pricing and inbound focused, working a lot with engineering, defining the market requirement, defining the product product uh, description requirement, um, and write the specs so that engineering can de develop a tool that you think would be marketable. And uh, in bigger companies, they will split marketing into two parts, and the second part is traditionally called product marketing. That tends to be the outbound piece, right? That's the part that you oftentimes get to work with channel partners, um, maybe uh, figure out if you're going to sell online through your online store, and certainly figure out pricing and promotion. Um, there are other aspects of marketing, but I don't want to get into nuances and distract us from just a simplified def definition of the core aspect of marketing. Back in the 80s, uh, we lived in an offline world using offline tools. Today, all of these tools still exist, right? We still have billboards, we still have TV, we still have print ads. However, uh, when we moved on to the 1990s, as I mentioned, search, uh, gave rise to online marketing and new tools and techniques and skill sets were required. So today, the challenge is a, a good marketer needs to not only know all of the offline disciplines, but he or she also needs to develop these online expertise. In general, it's things like SEO, search engine marketing, also known as pay-per-click, also known as AdWords, because Google is one of the largest uh, pay-per-click players. Other things that have changed from a sales perspective is, in prior years, it used to be pretty much face-to-face -face meeting, right? Everybody always traveled and flew to make the presentations, particularly for corporate sales. Nowadays, more so than ever, we ask our customers to self-serve, download PDF documents right from our website, and we almost always set up a go-to-meeting go to for initial demos. And rarely do we actually fly out to uh, visit the customers, except for really large deals that still require face-to-face -face relationship building. Um, fast forward, since the 1990s, we now have added a, a new compo component called social media marketing. So what that now means is online, offline, plus social media. So of course, as the discipline of marketing keeps on evolving, here are some typical questions people always ask. So I want to put social media in perspective and give you guys a very simplified way of thinking about social media. The diagram actually um, represents a, a framework for thinking about social media. Typically, we call that a hub and spoke model. Center in the hub is typically your website or your blog. The spokes are your social media channels. The big four are typically LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. 
And the reason why people use social media as a marketing method is, is really because you can think of social media as an amplification platform. Simply said, um, if you write a piece of valuable content and you syndicate it and share it with your social media channels, you could, if you had a hundred friends, if you used traditional method of marketing, you can only get your message out to your hundred friends. But if you have make good use of social media channels, potentially you can, in, in assuming a 10% uh, effective sharing rate, essentially a hundred of your friends could result in your message getting to 1,100 friends. So that, in a nutshell, is really the power of social media. Uh, is there a question? You look like you had a question. No. Okay. Or if you guys have comments, uh, we're a very small group, so just interrupt. I think the key when you deploy social media strategy, however, is for you to nevertheless keep in mind we often say you need to know the difference between the silent majority, from the vocal minority, from the social authority. Right? It's like anything else in life. It's a pyramid. There are over 750 million Facebook users. But most of them are the silent majority in where they talk amongst themselves, right? They're close friends and families. There are very few vocal minority who, you know, who really make a difference um, no matter which social media platform you're talking about. And then finally, there are social authority. In every discipline, you're looking for the top blogger, the people with the most influence in your particular space because their blogs are well read. When they make a comment, it's like E.F. Hutton. People listen. So you don't want to confuse quantity for quality. When push comes to shove, quality wins. But the mathematics of it all is that you need to have some quantity, right, in order for you to get to quality.